Now, um, I happen to be good friends with Wim Hof. Actually, my exploration of, of respiration work and breath work started a few years ago when I decided I wanted to work on emotion systems and internal states. And I literally just emailed Wim and uh, said, I think what you're doing is amazing, uh, mostly because um, what you do is amazing, but he's um, made all of what he does available to people through scientific study. So there's this beautiful paper in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which is a legitimate journal, showing that the Wim Hof type breathing causes these increases in anti-inflammatory cytokines that um, literally uh, allowed people to resist uh, the effects of E. coli injections, flu, vomiting, fever. It's a really brilliant study. Um, I had nothing to do with it. It's very, very cool. And so Wim said, come out to the Pyrenees and we, uh, where he was for the summer, and I, I learned some of these protocols from him. I'm not going to take you through a full Wim Hof type method, but um, Wim, the Iceman, right, um, also likes to put himself in cold. That's a great, yeah, you get the brown fat thermogenesis and, and all that stuff. But a lot of, if you look back at the story, the reason Wim found breath work was actually through cold exposure. So he puts himself in the ice to get the breathing going. Then he realized voluntary breathing and controlling your breathing is powerful. And he came up with what some people call Wim Hof method. There are other people who have developed methods that are similar. We're not going to do any of the breath holds. I'm actually, um, the breath holds take some skill and they, and you never want to do this in water because you can pass out and drown and people have done that. And the breath holds can be a little bit complicated for people with uh, pulmonary issues. So, but there is a principle here, which is that inhaling more oxygen than you ex exhale over a series of time can get you into kind of an upstate. Now, so we'll do this together. Feel free to opt out. It's a little uncomfortable first and please no breath holds unless you're like skilled Wim Hoffers. Um, because I don't want to pick up anybody off the floor and I don't want to be responsible for what happens. Okay. But what we're going to go through is actually pretty standard without the breath holds and it still can get you into that state. So now you're actually going to use your mouth also. So it goes something like this. It goes, I've got the microphone on, so I hopefully, hopefully I don't blow out your ears with this. Um, it's going to be a big inhale. So it's big inhale and then kind of letting your lungs drop and exhaling. So the inhale is just a little bit longer. Go ahead and practice. Right? So it's going to be noisy in here. So 30 of those, and you're going to get a little tingly. And for some people, it's really uncomfortable. You're generating adrenaline. That's actually the adrenal, adrenaline release is part of the way in which you get the um, anti-inflammatory effect. And that was described in this, uh, in this PNAS paper. And so, but the net effect here is more oxygen coming into your system. The second round to me is where the real magic happens because the first one's a little uncomfortable. If you feel it well enough, push into the second round. If you feel lightheaded to the point where you feel like you're gonna keel over, just stop. And it's not a problem. No shame in that. Okay. Um, and we might do a little mini breath hold in there. I'll, uh, I'll whim. Um, and he here's how it goes. Okay. So we'll do it together. So it's going to be an inhale through the nose and then dropping the air out through your mouth or through your nose, but it's kind of a little bit longer on the exhale. So it's uh, inhale, excuse me, a little longer on the inhale. So it's inhale emphasized. All right. So, um, this is a tool that you can use to upregulate your level of autonomic arousal. So you might see fighters doing this or before when people get psyched up, sometimes if you're nervous, you're naturally doing this. <sighs> and kind of get a demonic look on your face like I just did right there. And I'm going to talk about, it, and I'm not telling you where to look. You can do whatever you want. Close your eyes, keep them open, whatever's comfortable for you. Okay. All right, let's do it. Um, 30 is kind of a lot, excuse me. Uh, on your marks, that always gets people nervous. It's like PE class. And let's go. So let's do one. Now I'm gonna stop so I can count. You guys keep going. Good. Keep going. It's actually 20 to 30 that works. The exact number isn't same. Now let's pick up the pace just a tiny bit. Good. Good. And now slow it down again. Okay, now big inhale and then blow out all your air. Empty yourself out. Empty yourself out. Good. Now, a traditional sort of Wim Hof ish esque thing would be to now hold the, that exhale. But let's not stay down there too long, but you're pretty much all oxygen out of your lungs. And you've kind of primed your system for, bet, believe it or not, through this thing called the Bohr effect and a shift in your alkalinity to kind of prime your cells to absorb more oxygen. So let's give them some oxygen. So big inhale. And if you like, you can hold. 
And I like to push the oxygen around a little bit, kind of like breathe into your feet. It sounds so wacky, but you can kind of, the idea here and now let go. Okay. So for how many people in the room was that totally uncomfortable? Like that? Yeah. A little bit uncomfortable. If you, what's that? Okay. After lunch, that's true. So the, probably the best time to do this is when you're, when you haven't just eaten. But, um, as I say, with any good sort of state regulating practice, you've got two things at, at your disposal, things that you're going to do to shift the baseline so that you can buffer stress better over time. This is like getting more fit, like taking a run, but then, and so then you let's say you had to run some distance, not during your morning run, you're able to do it, right? So you've shifted the baseline on your endurance and your VO2 and you know, VO2 max and all that good stuff. But there's also the acute tool. So when things hit and you need to do it, you don't have the option of when that happens. So let's do a second round. And this is really where you start to access the state shifts. Okay. So let's start again. So big inhale through the nose and then out through your mouth and then just start cycling two. Good. And if you go out of sync with one another, that's fine. Good. Good. If you feel a little tingly, just push through it. You're bringing more oxygen into your system than you're exhaling overall. We have an astronaut in the room, so I'm very curious what's, you know, if he's going to start levitating or what he's going to do. He's probably do anything. Has Great. Let's do five more each. And then blow out all your air. and then hold that exhale. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I promise no breath holds. These are kind of mini breath holds. People sometimes like to push for their maximum time. I, I personally don't recommend that. And now big inhale and hold. And what you're doing is you're bringing more oxygen into your system now and the, and the system is primed to use that oxygen. That's the theory anyway. And make sure your eyes are open now and then just relax and go back to nasal breathing. So there are occasionally a few people that feel differently, but um, typically what this does is kind of increases your energy levels, right? So um, dedicated uh, Wim Hoffers do this for, I've heard people doing this for like an hour a morning. Uh, to me, three rounds tends to be, get me into a state where I'm very clear and we haven't completed all the science on this style of breath work. I've been saying Wim Hof breathing just to, for simplicity. Um, there are other people that do this kind of thing. I don't have any business relationship to whim either. We just happen to be, be friends, but I, um, this is what you can learn more about it by looking, it, looking it up and a practice like this done each morning. will do a couple things. One is you learn to be calm -er in the face of elevated adrenaline within your system. Cause the kind of breathing that you were doing actually starts to kind of ramp up the adrenaline in your system. This all, this style of breathing also seems to do something powerful for getting your state into a mode in which it can access and absorb information, right? So kind of anti-sleepy states.